Hello young learners, so far you have learnt how to classify elements into metals and non-metals on the basis of their physical property. You also learnt how metals react with air and form metal oxides. Now moving ahead, let's learn some more chemical properties of metals. Now I have few samples of some metals. I have iron filings, copper turnings, aluminium foil, magnesium ribbon and zinc granules here. Now here is a small task for you. You have to perform a small activity and check how these metals react with cold water, hot water and even steam. And you have to note down your observations, which metals reacted with cold water, which reacted with hot water and probably some of them may react only with steam. So this is for you to explore. And here I have a small activity in front of you, observe carefully but remember this is only a demonstration activity to be performed by your teachers. Okay, so I have taken sodium metal over here and this sodium metal, remember I told you that there are few alkali metals which are so soft that they can be cut with knife. So here observe carefully, this is sodium metal piece which can be easily cut with knife and I am taking a very small piece of sodium and I have wrapped it in cotton and now observe how it will react when I put it in water. So here I am leaving it in water. Metals like sodium and potassium, look they react so violently with cold water. In case of sodium and potassium, see the reaction is so violent and exothermic that the evolved hydrogen has immediately caught fire. Look, you can see yourself. And that is why I told you this reaction has to be performed only by teacher. And look at the reaction. Can you write the chemical equation of the chemical reaction of sodium with water that you have just now observed? Try doing so. So my dear young scientist, always remember that metals react with water and produce a metal oxide and hydrogen gas. And these metal oxides, they react with water to further form metal hydroxide. Now that you have learned the reaction of metals with water, now let us see how metals react with acids. I have taken five test tubes here. In this test tube, I have taken a small sample of iron filings. Here I have taken copper turnings. In this we have aluminium foil. Here magnesium ribbon is present and in this zinc granules. Now I am going to add 5 ml of dilute sulfuric acid in each of them. And you have to observe if chemical reaction is taking place in any of them. We have to take care that we put equal amount of dilute hydrochloric acid in each of them. Well, bubbles have started forming. Can you see? You have to observe the rate of formation of bubbles in each of them. Which metals are reacting vigorously? I think it's magnesium. 
with so many bubbles being formed and well you can help your visually impaired friends to help them touch it so that they also know that it is exothermic process and what about zinc i think zinc is equally reacting fast can you see the formation of bubbles and note carefully how the bubbles are arising from beneath the zinc metal and what about this aluminum foil copper and iron i think iron is trying its best and what about this copper is copper reacting here no reaction at all so can you arrange them in some kind of order of reactivity after watching this you must have observed in this activity that rate of formation of bubbles was the fastest in case of magnesium and the reaction was also the most exothermic in this case so somewhat the reactivity order can be that magnesium is most reactive and after magnesium what is it well i think i'm sure you must have observed and iron also reacted with dilute hydrochloric acid but in case of copper no bubbles were seen and temperature also remained same so this shows that copper does not react with dilute hydrochloric acid now learners you must try writing equations for the reaction of magnesium aluminum zinc and iron with dilute hydrochloric acid now it's time for you to visit library and you may refer to school library or e library or your own textbook to find out why hydrogen gas is not evolved when a metal reacts with nitric acid can you guess we have learned that metals replace hydrogen from acids and hydrogen gas is evolved in the cases where the reaction happened but there is an exception and here i am giving you a small hint if you would have taken nitric acid instead of dilute hydrochloric acid you wouldn't have seen any reaction you know why because nitric acid is a strong oxidizing agent maybe it oxidizes the hydrogen produced find out and record and now it's time for you to become little deductive are you ready you know what happened once a man went door to door posing as goldsmith he promised to bring back the glitter of old and dull gold ornaments an innocent lady gave a set of gold bangles to him which he dipped in a particular solution and the bangles sparkled like new but the weight was reduced drastically the lady got very upset but after a futile argument with the man she still could not find what the reason was can you play the detective to find out the nature of the solution he had used hmm just a little hint for you what was aquaregia okay so moving ahead by now you have seen that all metals are not equally reactive we have checked the reactivity of various metals with oxygen water and acids but all metals do not react with these reagents so we will not be able to put all the metal samples we had collected in decreasing order of reactivity children always remember the displacement reactions we did yes displacement reactions give better evidence about the reactivity of metals well 
my dear young discoverers, to find the order of reactivity, we have to do a small comparative study. And for this, I have taken copper sulfate solution in these four test tubes, ferrous sulfate solution in these four test tubes. Here in these four test tubes, we have zinc sulfate solution and in these magnesium sulfate solution. Now, one by one, I will be adding iron, copper, magnesium and zinc metals in all these 16 test tubes. So, let us start. Here I am adding iron nail in the copper sulphate solution, small amount of copper turnings also go in the copper sulphate solution, a small piece of magnesium ribbon, this I am adding in copper sulphate solution. and a tiny zinc granule also I am adding in copper sulphate solution. And now we will wait for the reaction to happen and we will see what happens after 20 minutes. And likewise, let me add all these small pieces of metals into the solutions. In the ferrous sulphate solution, I have added iron nail and in ferrous sulphate, I am adding copper turning, a small piece of magnesium ribbon and a zinc granule goes here. Likewise, now in the zinc sulphate, I am adding a small piece of iron here. In zinc sulphate, a small, small pieces of copper turnings I have added here magnesium ribbon and zinc granule. Similarly, I have added four metals in magnesium sulphate also. So, after 20 minutes, let us see the results. In case of copper sulphate, where we had added iron nail, the color of copper sulphate has faded. You can compare it with the original solution from which we had put copper sulphate solution in this test tube. Can you see the color change? Okay. And what about the iron nail? Let us see. Likewise, if we look at this test tube where magnesium was added, we can see that copper is displaced in this tube. And let us have a look where in copper sulphate solution we had added zinc. Here also reaction is taking place though it is a slow reaction. And also note that there is no change here in this test tube where we have added copper. So, what can we infer? Yes, that iron, magnesium and zinc are more reactive than copper. Reactive metals can displace less reactive metals from their compounds in solution or molten form. Now, coming to ferrous sulphate solution, let us see which metal has been able to remove iron from iron sulphate solution. Okay. In case of copper, there is no change. Whereas, we see that iron is displaced from iron sulphate solution by magnesium and also if we observe the case of zinc, we can see that slight reaction has taken place here also. So, iron has been displaced by zinc also. So, we can infer that magnesium and zinc are more reactive than iron. 
let us have a look at zinc sulphate solution. Some reaction has taken place in this case. Can you see some change? Chemical reaction has taken place. Looks like only magnesium has been able to replace zinc from zinc sulphate solution. There is no reaction in case of copper and no reaction of zinc sulphate with iron and also no reaction with zinc. So, what can we infer? We can infer that magnesium is reactive than zinc. So, now we are heading towards making our own reactivity series. And what about magnesium sulphate solution? Any reaction in any of the test tubes? No, no reaction at all. That means, iron, copper and zinc none could displace magnesium from magnesium sulphate solution. So, it seems magnesium is most powerful of these. By performing such activity and doing this comparative study of relative reactivities of metals, we have been able to arrange the metals in this particular activity in the order of their decreasing reactivities, which says that magnesium is more reactive than zinc. So, here magnesium, this is the most reactive. You can take many more metals also, but here we had taken these four metals only. So, amongst these four metals, magnesium is most reactive than zinc, which is more reactive than iron and which is more reactive than copper. So, you can note down the reactivity order from the screen. So, this is our reactivity series. The reactivity series is a list of metals arranged in order of their decreasing activities. Learning by doing is cardinal principle of science. So, I am sure your understanding has been facilitated by interweaving this activity. Let us now see the reactivity or activity series which has been developed after performing various displacement experiments. So, the reactivity series of metals as you can see the most reactive metal is potassium and then sodium, calcium, magnesium, aluminum, zinc, iron, lead, copper, mercury, silver and gold which is the least reactive. Now, to reinforce your learning, we have an interesting science game. I have named this science game as sink in pairs. You can give it your own name. I am sure you all enjoy playing carom board. Want to play it? Okay. The rules have been tweaked a bit. All you need to do is make coins by writing symbols of metals included in the reactivity series. See, I have made these by sticking a paper and writing it with sketch pen. Even you can do it at home. So, here we have uh, the metals in the reactivity series, potassium, sodium, calcium, magnesium, aluminum, zinc, iron, lead, copper and what comes after copper tell me? Yes, it is mercury and then we have silver and queen will represent H. H you know is hydrogen and it is not a metal, but yes it is kept in the reactivity series so that you can compare that which metal can replace hydrogen. Well, in which reaction it was? Where the hydrogen was getting replaced by metal? Yes, 
reaction of metals with acids. Well, okay, let us start playing and I am arranging it here in the circle and while I arrange it, let me tell you that each player has to pocket two consecutive coins to score a point. Any metal coin followed by a metal coin which it can displace. The player will be allowed to refer to the reactivity series chart in the beginning 2-3 games till they learn it in the process of playing. Okay? So, let us start the game. Here I have the striker. I am going to start the game by striking it. If you have carom board at home, why do not you arrange it and play with me? After pocketing aluminum coin, player has to sink another metal coin, which aluminum is capable of replacing. Tell me quickly, which metals aluminum can replace? Refer to the activity series. Now tell, yes, the metals placed below it in the activity series like zinc, iron, lead, copper, mercury, silver and gold. All these can be replaced by aluminum. So, let us see. We proceed with the game. Okay, and children do not get disappointed if you do not get it perfect in one chance because you have to keep trying and this is what the essence of life skill is. So, here zinc has gone inside the pocket. So, now look what has happened. Aluminium very easily can replace zinc. So, this is what the game is about sink in pairs. So, okay, here I have my pair and I get my scores for this. So, let us continue the game and when you are playing with your friends, the second chance goes to the friend. So, here let me do it myself. Okay. Let me try again. Okay, wow, this time I am lucky. I have pocketed sodium and tell me children what all metals sodium can replace yes you remember it correctly sodium is on the top of the reactivity series so sodium can replace almost all the metals except one and which one is that yes potassium so any of the metals can be replaced by sodium so let me try my hand Wow, I have been able to pocket magnesium. So, this way the game goes on and of course, sinking the striker costs you one piece and your turn. I am repeating, if by mistake you sink the striker, you miss your chance and you have to give one of your pieces. Enjoy and learn science in a fun filled atmosphere. Now, let us quickly solve this worksheet. If you are given samples of 4 metals and they are named A, B, C and D and they are added to the solutions one by one. Now, which solutions? That you can see in the table given on the slide. And now, children, you have to tell me which is the most reactive metal amongst these. And what would you observe? If B is added to solution of copper sulphate. Now, there is a small task that you have to arrange the metals A, B, C and D in the order of decreasing reactivity. And now, let us revise what we have learnt so far. You have learnt to plan and conduct investigation to arrive at and verify the order of reactivities of metals and arranging them in decreasing order. You have also learnt to differentiate between metals and non-metals based on their reaction with water, acid and other metal salts. So, I am sure now you will exhibit creativity in designing science games 
using eco-friendly resources. And finally, you exhibited values of honesty and rational thinking while making observation of various activities. And don't forget to keep all the records in your portfolio. So keep learning science with high spirits. Happy learning, my dear explorers.